Hi, this is Gloria, your life coach. Welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Hi, this is Ron Johnson, your life coach, leadership coach, motivation speaker, and health coach. And welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. It's going to be a great topic today. And we're going to discuss today is emotional boundaries. I mean, how many of us out there really do not set boundaries in relationships, friends, uh, ourselves? More importantly, it's ourselves because we put these... um, I guess we overextend ourselves and we forget to set boundaries. And after we overextend ourselves, we get very exhausted. So, you know, I, I'll give one quick example about myself before we get into the podcast. So those that know I'm leaving California, definitely. And being part of a trainer is I do have clients that buy sessions. And um, what happens is that COVID happened. I mean, this whole thing just turned upside down, topsy-turvy. So we all know that. So part of this thing is, is thing, but sorry, not thing. Part of this is, I have clients that have sessions with remaining. And um, for me, I need to make sure I complete their sessions at least before I leave because time goes by fast. And before you know what, you're out of here and I can't finish the in-person sessions. So for the last two or three weeks, I have not been sleeping. That means I'm waking, I'm going to bed at 9 p.m. I'm waking up at 11, 50 p.m. I'm waking up at 1 p.m. At 2 p.m. I'm sorry, 11, 50 p.m. Midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., and by 2 a.m., I'm up to about 3 a.m. 3 a.m., I go to bed. I'm up at 4 a.m. As you guys know, 4 a.m., I read my book. And I get started for the day. First class usually about 6 a.m. or 6.30 a.m. But it was just exhausting. And um, what really started happening, I was getting putting my stress on myself. And this is what we do. We put a lot of stress on ourselves or taking a lot of burden. So right now, um, I've been doing three days a week, sorry, seven days a week. Um, usually, I don't work six days a week taking on clients to finish their sessions. In this case, I, I wasn't setting my boundary. Uh, I was taking on a lot of stress on myself trying to finish um, client sessions because I want to make sure I do my part as being a business owner. And what I noticed just four or five days ago, I said, wait a minute here. I didn't set my boundaries. I didn't set what should be happening and what shouldn't be happening. So if a client can't make, make their session, I got to notify them that, hey, I won't be here. You got to finish your session amount of time. I can't do it. And instead of me putting that burden on my shoulders, I wasn't telling people or setting limitations on that. And a lot of times what happens when we're in in a situation, we don't put limitations. I was afraid to stand up for myself until I got frustrated and stood up for myself. So those out there that are not setting emotional boundaries or boundaries at all, what happens, you get to the point where you get frustrated and you get angry and you set a boundary. If we're aware of our boundaries prior to getting frustrated, prior to getting angry, we set that boundary. So when we talk about emotional boundaries, it's really separating your feelings from another person's feelings. Means this, if your mate or let's say your boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife are happy, then you're happy, right? So then that way become interchanged upon their emotional, um, let's say um, emotional, um, sorry, you're not setting emotional boundary because your happiness depends upon their happiness. When you set an emotional boundary, you're not tied to their happiness. And also letting someone else's feelings dictate your life. That really sucks. When if someone's having a bad day, you turn around and have a bad day and say, saying to yourself, well, that's their emotion. I'm not going to allow their emotion to dictate my day. I'm having a great day. But it usually happens. And again, we just don't set a boundary. And the third thing is, is that a lot of us out there want to please others. I mean, who doesn't want to please somebody else? I mean, see a smile on somebody else's face. I mean, your kids, your husband, your boyfriend, girlfriend, where it may be, or coworkers. Who doesn't want to set that boundary, right? When they're happy, you're happy. But when you don't set that boundary, that's what causes a little frustration, exhaustion, and tiredness. Gloria, what do you have to say about that? Mm -hmm. What I have to say about that with emotional boundaries, sometimes we get so caught up with making other people happy that we forget about ourselves. So we often feel guilty saying no, right? So... Or we, we just we just can't say no um, to others. But when you think about it, when you're putting everyone else's needs or happiness before your own, the person you keep saying no to is yourself. You got that right. Right. And, you know, then with all that, you get so caught up with that, you realize that you're not yourself anymore. You don't spend time on the things that you like to do or that you enjoy to do. And at times you resent people who are around you or people that are most, most especially close to you. That's true. 
I like to talk about, I had, I had an example. Um, I, I always use her, I won't say the name, but I call her nickname narcissist. <laughs> And in, in this case, I remember in this relationship is I wasn't set an emotional boundary. So if I would text her in the morning, hey, good morning, how are you doing? And she res- wouldn't respond right away. I respond good. I'm like, okay, my emotions are tied to her happiness. So if I text her in the morning and within a few minutes, she responds back, hi, good morning, happy, whatever day it is. I feel so excited. The rest of my day is great. And that right there becomes part of how I did not set my emotional boundaries. I intertwine my happiness based upon somebody else's happiness. Mm-hmm. Now, those out there that know that, yes, it's great to help others and it's great to be fulfilled, but at what cost? At what cost are you taking away your own emotional satisfaction? This is the example I just gave you right now. I was only happy when another person was happy. Does that suck? That's like 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 a year. I can only be happy when they were happy. So if I didn't get that good morning text right back or okay or good, I right then my day, my whole day was shot. And you think about it, if this happens seven or eight o'clock in the morning, the whole rest of the day is gone. And all those times would happen and it happened often, I didn't know what to do the rest of my day. I'm constantly checking my phone nonstop. So I forgot to text, how you doing? I, uh, no, I forgot to text, you know, okay, not good morning. Okay. Then I sit and I wait for a couple hours, right? I'm at my desk. Okay. I'm going to wait to about uh, 10 o'clock. Okay. How's your day? How are you doing so far? Then I, I will always count, always ask myself, when is the right way to make the move or right way to respond? And over a period of time, that become very draining for me. All I was doing was codependent upon someone else's happiness. But internally, I wasn't happy with myself and what I was doing, but I just did it hopefully you would get, hoping it would get better. So in this case, what do you think I should have done different? I, I was going to ask you, uh, I had a question about that. So Hold on. Um, in this case, if you look at it on a deeper emotional level, I'm wondering though if it could be that so you don't express yourself or your true feelings because were you afraid of rejection? You know what? Let's go a little deeper on that. I have no idea. Um, for over the course of my life, up until about a year ago, I was super afraid, I mean petrified of explaining my emotions to somebody else. So if I'm in a relationship, I will never express how I felt up until I got frustrated and angry because I was so afraid of losing her, okay, losing her, or you can lose a friend or whatever, I always subdued my emotions. I was afraid to stick up for myself. I was afraid to um, say how I felt because if I say how I felt, then she wouldn't like it and then now she'd be upset at me. And it wasn't the fact, now I can't sit here and blame her for her behavior, but no one ha- no one can control you. No one can make you feel a certain way. So because she wouldn't respond to my text, that wasn't her making me feel that way. That's myself. And because I was making myself feel that way, I was causing my own emotional imbalance on myself because I was causing myself to feel that way. I was causing myself to feel all these thoughts. Or, okay, she may not want to talk to me again. She may not want to see me again. She may not want to, you know, it was just exhausting. Um, and, and no matter what I've done, so let's say we went out for a date and I'm trying to wine and dine her because hoping we go home and be intimate. And what would happen is that I'm a tied to her emotions. So as she's like, I'm tired, right? I need to drop me off at home. I, I, I'm going to go home and sleep. I was then be overcome with anxiety and all these thoughts in my mind, creating all these um, feelings of, of, of re- rejection. Because I was so close, I was so wanting to make another person want me. That's the key right there. I want them to want me more than I wanted my own happiness. Does that answer your question? Hmm, it does. I was just kind of, I was getting a little speechless. So I think what, what happens also is that you get easily overwhelmed emotionally. It's not about being overwhelmed emotionally. Um, what it boils down to is a factor of this, and I did that myself for so many years, is I, once you said, all of us have been through a relationship, and we use a relationship as an example, emotional boundaries, because sometimes relationships, we don't set emotional boundaries, and that's part of our life. I went through a terrible breakup um, about you know, a long time ago, and um, I was always super afraid of expressing my emotions. Meaning that I always kept my heart closed off to expressing my true self because I was afraid of rejection. And because I was afraid of rejection, I didn't know how to love and didn't know how to express. Because the fear was if I express my love or express who I was, I'd be rejected. Vice versa would happen. 
and for I expressed too much love. I, I remember um, I, I would go out to dating and I meet a girl and I'm first thing I'm doing, if I really liked her a lot, I was kind of in touch with her. She's pretty or whatever. I'm sending flowers. I'm doing everything I can to, to woo them to make sure they know I'm the guy. I'm the guy you'd be choosing. And at the end of the day, if it wasn't reciprocated, meaning they weren't showing me the same kind of affection I was showing them, I will always, I will automatically go into protection mode for myself because I'm afraid of getting hurt because I became emotionally tied to them. Is that also, does it also have anything to do with lacking or lack of trust? Not lack of trust, I have more or less lack of self esteem for myself. Okay. Because if you self have self confidence, self esteem, you would have um, more um, willingness to set boundaries. You have more willingness to stick up for yourself. But when you don't have a self esteem confidence, and you know you, you're kind of lean on someone else to to either show you what you're lacking, right? If we're in a relationship with somebody, usually we're lacking some kind of. Um, um, let's say emotional bond and we're just seeking that emotional bond. And that's what starts happening. This as I didn't set the boundaries I wanted because I lacked the self-confidence and self-esteem I need to become in that relationship with. So, you know, humans are funny. They're like, they're worse than animals. So when someone knows you like them a lot, you're into them. Mm -hmm. Subconsciously, they take advantage of you. Mm -hmm. So she had the ability to say what she wanted to me whenever she wanted to, because she know I'll keep running back to her. Yeah, And that could be friendship too. Yeah, it's with with anything. Oh, that's totally hundred percent. You know, you're you are you're a hundred percent in control of your actions, but just because you're in control doesn't mean you're aligning your actions with your needs. Um, no, like you talk about you talk about setting boundaries or emotional boundaries with with just anybody. I mean, I can. On that part, I can totally relate. I have, you know, with with my family, I have a different group of friends. And I remember just at one point, it was always for me was making everybody happy, making time for everybody. I could not say no to anyone. To, I don't know how I did it. You know, it was doing, um, I, I was, you know, I'd, I'd never say no. Like, let's say to my mom. My mom relies and depends on me on a lot of stuff. And, um, and some of my family relies on me on putting the family together, or let's say if we want to have a get together or dinner for somebody's birthday, it's like, everybody comes to me, like, can you contact so-and-so or everybody and we'll set a time, but I'm the one contacting everybody. Why, why me? I'm not sure. But, um, and then there's also other friends I have around because I have different group of friends at one point in my life, which now I really don't, um, it was always, you know, one group, I can't say no. The other group, I can't say no. So I'm always everywhere making everyone happy because they want me to be around or they want me to be there. They want me to do certain things with them or go out with them. And it was, for me, even if I didn't feel like it, I felt guilty saying no. I feel bad saying no. Even if my body's telling me, you know, don't, you're tired, you've, you know, you need to rest or you don't have time for that, but I made the time for it. Um, I made sure that I made every event or every occasions, whatever it is with, with, with some of my friends, I'm just always there. I'm always present to a point where a lot of them knows that I'm reliable and I'm always going to be there. If someone is going through something, they need someone to go out with, hang out with, go have a drink, go to a bar, go dancing. They know who to call and they know who to contact because they know I'll be there for them. And, you know, I've always made sure that I am with every single one of them. And same goes with my family. But I think I've gotten to a point in my life, which is just in the last couple of years, just this last couple of years, I've made some adjustments and I've made some changes because there was a time where I felt that I think um, I kind of ran out of energy at one point. It, it was, Hell yeah. <laughs> it was draining. <laughs> and, you know, when going through the IPIC training that we went through um, and I... I've learned so much about myself and I think some of the, the questions I've had had been answered. I've made some changes in my life. And 
you know, some of those changes was not being friends with a lot of the people that I thought I was friends with. I'm not saying that I've completely eliminated them out of my life. I'm just not there anymore as I used to, as much as I used to be. So if I see them somewhere, if I see them, you know, I still have them on social media. We're still friends on social media. We're cool. But I, you know, I don't hang out with them as much as I used to. And and that's when I was saying was, I think I've said this in the past that some of them had came up to me and says, you know, you're antisocial. And I said, no, I'm not antisocial. I just have a different perspective in life now. You know, there's two things here when I listen to that. I remember we took that uh, ELI assessment and your energy level four is very high. So you get pleasure off helping other people. Yes. But yeah. also the the drawback to that one is you get suffer. You try to overextend yourself too much. And mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you're exhausting, you're tired no matter what. And also sometimes if you overextend yourself is that they don't do the same thing in return. And, and it's funny now when you have a change, first thing people want to say is label you as something. Oh, you're, you're different. What mm-hmm. does that mean <laughs> to you? I, you know what? I, I didn't know how to answer that. And I didn't know how to take it at first in the beginning when I first heard that. And they have told me that. And I've also heard it from others that I, you know, that they've, others have talked about me about being, that way where I just stop showing up, I just stop being in contact with them and I stop staying, you know, staying in contact. Um, I didn't know at first, I didn't know how to feel. I think in the beginning I was just kind of in shock and maybe there's a little bit of hurt because I felt like, wow, well, you guys were never really my friends to begin with. You know what I mean? Because I felt like you'd accept me um, mm-hmm. for who I am, you've, ex- you would accept the changes that, um, I am going through. And then I think I've adjusted to that, to where I just didn't care anymore or that their opinion didn't matter to me. Nice. Um, I don't know how I did it, but I just did it, but it was a process. Uh, um, I know that I think a lot of them have gotten the point and they just stopped inviting me, which I was fine with. I was okay with. And now I just have, you know what? I have a handful of friends who I know. Um, and I'm okay with that because I know these are the people that actually I've been friends with for a long time. And that stuck with me through ups and downs, through thick and thin. And who is supporting me and looking at the changes that I'm going through. But they know that. The Gloria that they've once met before is still there, even though I have uh, I have, or I am still going through the changes in my life, or even though that I have a different perspective in life now. But at the same time, they know they're learning something from me. I have to laugh to myself is that the moment that you don't fit someone else's criteria, the first thing you do is label about something. They the moment do. they think... And, and label me as what? Because I've changed? No, maybe I have more awareness to myself. Or maybe you brought awareness to me. Now I'm doing the things I want to do in my life. Because as we go through this journey and, you know, I, I was on the phone with my mom the other day. Mom calls me. We talk on the phone at least three times a week, if not more or less. And it sometimes it's very infuriating when I know my mom could do much better for herself. Mm-hmm. But then again, I keep telling myself, Ron, look, you know, your mom is 70 and being seven does not mean you, you're dead. Okay. This idea of, and I'm getting off subject, but the idea of you're seven years old and you should be slowing down, you should retirement, that's total BS. Okay. As long as you're still alive in this world, you got good health, you're, you're in good spirits, you could do whatever you want. I mean, 10 years ago, I saw this old lady, they were talking about, she's like 80 years old, jumping out of plane for skydiving, first time in her life. Mm-hmm. So while you're alive, you can do whatever you want in this world. But when you start, you know, in my mom's case, I just need to get over the fact that she can't do better than what she's able to do. Like, I know she can do better, but until she sees it, can't do better. So back to my point with you, when your pe- when people you know start seeing you do better or see you changing, the first thing to do is they want to love you as something that you're not. Or instead of using a simple, hey, Gloria, I'm curious, something's changed about you. 
do you mind can I ask you what's, what's up? Something's, something's different. And open what then there happens is it opens up this glorious, abundant, happy, collaborative dialogue about things. And but when you when you fail to set your emotional boundary for yourself, and people are used to using you to be, hey, Gloria, it's Saturday. I know it's 10 o'clock at PM and can you come hang out? You're like, yeah, I come hang out. But then it's not being reciprocated. And that's what becomes more suffering is that when you text them to hang out, oh, I'm tired or I'm busy or I'm I'm sick or I got things uh, um, um, coming up, you know, or you, you, you have this event plan with them, you know, a month in advance, right? Mm-hmm. And a month in advance comes and they're like, hey, well, two weeks from there, date, you still coming? Yeah, 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 you still coming? Yeah. Oh, actually, I can't. Something came up, somebody's birthday party. Well, didn't we didn't we discuss this about a month ago? Oh, I, I can't miss it. And it's like, okay. Again, it becomes emotionally draining because you had this happiness set aside to have fun with these people and they don't come there. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, that's, that's why. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go. No, you go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, that's the frustrating part about that. Yeah. And, and, and that's where you say to yourself, man, I got to start cutting off boat anchors. You know, mm-hmm. boat anchors is my metaphor for saying, you know, if you had a boat anchor tied to your waist and they're very, very heavy and someone dropped you in the middle of the ocean, you're going to sink, right? But once you detach that boat anchor, like detaching yourself from someone else's happiest outcome, you can swim to the top for air. But as long as you attach yourself to that boat anchor, you will sink to the bottom. Mm-hmm. And before you know it, you're, you're, you're suffocating, you're, you're frustrated, you're angry. Or you simply commit emotional death with yourself because your souls, you're always subduing your feelings, subduing them, subduing them that when it's time for you to relinquish those feelings, you don't know how to, or you don't have to stick up for yourself because it's been subdued so much. Right. It's like and, drowning right there. Mm-hmm. And I'm always like, I'm always just understanding it, right? Because it's like, again, we go back to I'm here for you, but you're not here for me type of thing. You know, and it's it, it became draining and it became, you know, to a point where it's just like this is not it's not doing anything for me anymore. Um, it's not helping our friendship, our relationship, you know, and, and then same goes with family. It's not just with friends. It's um, sometimes with the family is the same thing because they became they become dependent on you on certain things and they rely on you because they're so used to it. I mean, emotional boundaries aren't easy to see. No, it really isn't, and most especially with family, of it, it's course. like <laughs> it's like a blur if you don't make them clear, you know. So, and I, I feel like it was, you know, I had to really, you know, taking going into IPEC really helped me a lot, so much, um, and I've learned the pro. It was a process for me. Um, you know, when we did all the coaching training, a lot of the coach training for me was how to say no to people. I was going to a lot to that. And it was, um, it was a process. It was a real process. And I started with some friends and then, and then, um, then with my family. And you know what? It was hard for me, but I don't know if it was really that hard for them. I think they as far as my family goes, like my mom, she's, I think she understood it and she's adjusted to it because my mom became like my child. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's like relying to me for everything, you know, and my, and my stepdad, like both of them, I feel like I've taken two older kids sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I, when I had, when I set those boundaries and, I've learned to say no to certain things to both of them and my mom, especially my mom, because I get really sensitive when it comes to my mom. Mm -hmm. And I I slowly did that. And sometimes I just turn my back when I say no, I just turn my back. Because, you know, what I've done in the past is whenever I say no to her, it's like when I hear her voice kind of change, her tone of voice change. And I'm like, okay, fine, I'll do it. Okay, what do you want? What do you need? Do you know what I mean? So it, it was easy for me to immediately turn that around. But I, I worked on that and I realized that, man, it wasn't that bad at all. It wasn't, it wasn't that, it wasn't too bad. It was me. It was all me. And um, the same thing with some of my friends. I know that some with some who are very, very close to me, 
um, the moment I said no on certain things, it was something that I knew that they weren't going to be used to and, or they're not used to it until I kept doing it and more practice. It was it was practice for me. Then they've, you know, kind of adapted to it and realized and understood it. Interesting. It wasn't where I had to keep explaining myself. In the beginning, I felt like I had to keep explaining myself. Then I got to a point where, no, no, no. They don't need to hear my explanation. A no is a no. Because I just, I can't. But, you know, let me tell you, though, with, with all that, the changes and all that process, I have so many people in my life, a lot of who I thought were my friends are no longer part of my life. Interesting. And, yeah. And I have one that I became really, really close to. This was this was kind of kind of hard a little bit because um I've I think I've gotten close to him who I thought he was my friend at one point, but maybe he really wasn't because we were we had, you know, it was different when we're together and playing volleyball. But outside, we're not really friends because outside and after volleyball, that was it, right? So for him, for the longest time, this guy, I had a hardest time saying no. Every time he'd contact me, every time he'd want to go somewhere, go play volleyball, go hang out, I'm always saying yes. And even after volleyball, it's always saying yes. I could not say no. Did you want, to, did you want his friendship that bad? No, I didn't. And that's that was the thing is there was something about it like, why couldn't I just say no to this guy? And the thing is, he depended on me so much that I felt like uh, I had another kid that I'm taking care of, that I'm <laughs> walking through every step of the way of whatever it is in his life, you know, and and he would rely on me to do a lot of things that he says would be for both of us, but it's really most of it is benefiting him because I'm doing most of the work, but he's not. You know what? I, I, this person, I, I, I experienced one like this and what I call him is a friend of convenience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I, you know, I felt like I was taking advantage of, and I knew that and I felt that, but I still couldn't say no. So I had to work on again, saying no to this guy it was it was a process and when I did it was like oh okay that was the response I got in the beginning but you know what I let me tell you when I started setting all these emotional boundaries and these boundaries with you know a lot of the people around me um, because I've always been that type of person that would never say no because I couldn't I felt lighter and I felt better I was just about to ask you. So after you start setting these boundaries, um, because in, in, in we, we discussed this before, especially in IPAC, there you had a high level four. Level four energy out there of people, that means she gets happiness off of, of helping others happy. Mm-hmm. But the drawback is you prove more suffering for yourself. So obviously when you um, made this person happier, you at the time you felt happy, but at the end of the, time, at the, end of the day, over time, you felt, wait a minute here, this is not being reciprocated. That's what really happens. You wake up and like, wait a minute here. I'm doing all the work. I'm putting all the effort. Then when I ask this person or him to hang out, it's like, what the heck? You're not coming through, dude. What's up? Oh, well, you know, here comes the line, laundry list of, of excuses that why not instead of just, yeah, I will, or I can't or whatever. And it's like super flaky. But when you are able to um, – realize this is happening and say, Hey, I want to set a boundary that I'm going to take care of myself first because I always make myself available for you. No matter what time of the day, at the end of the day, I'm the one suffering, not you. So I got to take care of myself first. Cause I don't, cause you're only one glory, right? So you can only, you only have one person. So if you got to distribute your self care to yourself first, you know, the other people that are important in your life, and you got this one person coming in, taking a piece of the pie, there's something left for you. Mm-hmm. And it was crazy. I I remember even feeling like I wish I had a clone. I wish I could be in like how many different places all at one time, Mm -hmm. you know? And I mean, don't forget, I have kids too. I have kids that I need to, to take care of and and make happy too. So I had to really make a lot of choices, but you know, I, I realized I had to take care of myself and be kind to myself. Mm -hmm. What I've also learned throughout um 
what I've also learned all about that was time management. Oh my God, I, I figured out how to make time for everybody. Work, that, when we were doing IPEC, volleyball, just, uh, it was just everything. I mean, I did, you know, I, I learned something from it, but. Is that great? <laughs> it is. And again, it's saying no to others. I think it, it's what I've realized most, especially for me, I'm speaking for myself because of, you know, from my own experience is the most, I think, powerful form of self-care. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. I, I, when you're talking about this person, came to mind, <laughs> and that's why I use the word friend of convenience. So I had this uh, friend and her, actually, I know, I don't think it was a friend, but it was this, um, we met when I was 25. So we, we kind of, you know, hooked up or whatever, dated. And um, so after that, I ended up getting back with my ex-girlfriend. Then somehow she texts me and my ex-girlfriend's jealous because she knows my behavior. She calls a girl and comes out with just friends, whatever. And um, obviously that time the girls dated, we fell out. They became friends. And I think what ha happens, at that relationship fell out. So every now and then she just texts me, hey, how you doing? Great. How you doing? Great. How's this person doing I mean, the one I used to date. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't know. I've talked to her like five years or four years or six months, whatever it's been. Oh, okay. I'm just checking out how she's doing. Why don't you contact her yourself? So about a year ago in April, I get it. I was so upset when I got this, but I didn't know IPEC yet. And I was just hiring my new coach. I didn't know how to adjust. I didn't know how to um, adjust my emotions, but anger, right? So in this part, out the blue, I'm on vacation. I get a text. Hi, this is, you know, I can't say the person's name. Mm -hmm. And I was, and she's like, oh, you remember back in the four, you used to be a Mr. Play? You remember this girl named Ajali? And remember you tried to have us hook up? I was, I got the text out the blue. I mean, just out the blue. And at the time I responded back, that's like, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Uh, why are you bothering about that? Oh, I, I just came to mind right now. So you have that much time to think about something happening 15 years ago <laughs> that doesn't affect your life today? <laughs> so my coach showed me this. He says, next time that happens to you, and I can explain that I was very furious about this person, right? And she's like, oh, wish you best of luck because I, I didn't send a nice message. He says, next time that happens, you just respond back. Oh, you know what? I'm not that person anymore. Um, I was going through a tough time at that age and uh, – I'm not the person anymore. I apologize if I have any harm in you. I wish you the best of luck. Send a message. Because since then, this person hasn't contacted me at all. But it's just funny out the blue. That's what I call friend of convenience. So she only contacted me mm -hmm. when it was convenient for her, when she needed something from me or asked questions about somebody else. Never heard how you doing, how's life, happy birthday, nothing. And that's what I mean by setting emotional boundaries, right? In this case, I got furious because out the blue, she doesn't send me a text. If I set the boundary a long time ago that, hey, look, I, you need, you, if you want to contact me, ask me how I'm doing, that's great. But if you ask me about somebody else, you shouldn't contact them. And right then, if I said that, I set a boundary, I never heard a message from them again. It, it, was, it was something that happened like a long time ago. And you're going to send me a message about that. You, I don't remember this person. Like the person that you talked about, Ajali, I actually had to take the, type the name in and go on social media and find them. How funny. And, and hold on, hold on, hold on. No, no, no. Me and this person never met in person. I, I think I met this person on um, Match.com or something like that that oh time. Oh, my God. And we never met in person. So I never exchanged numbers with this person. It's just one of those things. You know somebody, know somebody, know somebody. You're coming to be friends. She knew that the girl was seeing. I, I just, at that point, I said, you need some. And this person is older than me. So I'm, if I'm 37 now, they have to be close to their 40s. That's okay. interesting. So it's, don't you have better things to do in life? But that tells you right then and there. Some people don't. And and she had to bother me out the blue or something happened 15 years ago. That's I, I totally forgot about it. <laughs> That's just funny. That's so long ago. Who did? I, I don't know. It, it's not like doing the whole time we've been made good friends and right. we made in contact. No. For the convenience, you're in contact and what's convenient for them. That's why I call it for the convenience. Yeah. Yeah. I know. That's That's what I have. I think I learned that from you. I think you're the one that, yeah, I think you're the one that told me that um, one time, and I think I was telling you a story about somebody. Oh and, yeah, I remember that. Uh -huh. Yeah, and I think that's um, kind of what made me realize. Wait a minute, that is true. That's what this person is to me. 
you know, and you know what, too, it's with this, I think, because, you know, like I said, we are in control of our own actions, of our own thoughts. Um, We need to set setting boundaries within ourselves or within yourself makes it easier to set boundaries with others. So first is you make, you need, you'll have to set boundaries for yourself. Mm-hmm. And when you do, I believe that when, once you do, then it'll make it easier for you to set boundaries with others. It does. And that's proposed down to one thing. We talked about emotional boundaries. Now let's talk about how to set healthy boundaries. Mm-hmm. So the way we always set healthy boundaries is knowing what our limits are. See, if you don't know, it's like a, I like to use examples. It's like a, a fishing pole, right? If you only put a 200 yard strand of a string on a fishing pole and it goes 100, 500 yards, it's going to snap, right? That's just the bottom line. Mm-hmm. And what happens if we don't set limitations and for upfront, regardless of our fears, regardless of how the person may, how, because when we think about what the person may react, it's our own self thinking how they react about something. So if we only think about not what they're going to react or think, when we think about our limitations and limits, then we can adjust. So we set our limits and say, we're not going to tolerate this. This is not acceptable in our life and no one to cut losses. So, cause if you don't set the limitations on yourself, see, you can be like, you talked about Gloria earlier. You're just, going, going, and everybody's getting a piece of the pie. Because if everybody keeps taking a piece of pie of Gloria, there's no piece left for her. But if Gloria takes a piece, takes a piece for herself first, you'll be full. Then everybody's getting the rest of the pie. So if you if you set your limitations on things you do and do not accept and things you want in your life and do not want in your life, right there you're setting healthy boundaries based upon limitations, allowing yourself to take the first slice of the pie for yourself. So... I would think that the only thing I'm thinking right now is when the problem is you, then the solution is you. Correct. See, so think about it. Yeah. You're frustrated about something and you didn't set your boundaries. The person doesn't know what your boundaries are. So the problem is you didn't set boundaries and the problem is you didn't stick up for yourself when the boundaries were crossed. So you are thus the cause and the solution to the problem. Right. Think about that for a second. You are the cause and the solution for the problem. That's awesome. <laughs> I mean, it may not be in that way, but that's pretty cool. No, that I is. Can... And that sounds, that's very powerful right there. Uh huh. So in my case, when I was dating the narcissist, if I didn't set healthy boundaries, what I will and will not tolerate, she'll keep pulling at me and pulling at me and pulling at me until uh, there's nothing left for myself. But if I set healthy boundaries from day one, and but had enough confidence to stick to mouthy boundaries because you can set boundaries, but if you don't stick to them, what's going to happen? They keep getting, um, they keep getting um, not met, and they keep getting used. But when you set them, regardless of what you think that person may feel or react, you're taking care of yourself first. So you see, the whole point point of this, it's not about setting boundaries, but self care. Because mm-hmm. if you don't set boundaries, how, how do you expect to take care of anybody else if you don't set boundaries on yourself? Right. So you put yourself first. So setting setting expectations with your own thoughts gives you the power to take back ownership of your own energy. Mm-hmm. You take care of yourself first. Of course. So you got to remember that you really are, like I said in the beginning, you really are in control of the way you feel. Yes, you are. So guess who's got your back? Myself. Me, myself. And yes. I. You got your back. Oh, yeah. I, I know. Because if I don't have my back, who will? E- e- even though those that have been in faith like myself, God has your back. But God needs to know you have your back first, too. <laughs> God's not going to help someone <laughs> doesn't help themselves. Yeah. Yeah. So you always got to think about that. Mm-hmm. You know what, too, what I've realized with this um setting boundaries and, uh, you know, the process that I went through is that the people who really care about you, they want you to do the things you enjoy just because you enjoy them. Mm-hmm. And they will be they right behind you and support you. And don't judge you. 
If they're your true friends that care about you, they'll care about listening how you feel. If they're not your true friend or don't have your best interests, then they're not really caring about you. They just care about themselves. So it's like, you know, all of us have had that drinking buddy, right? They only go out and drink, want to go out when you know they, when they know you're going to pay. Mm -hmm. And they know that they can go out when you have a great time. But then that you never hear from them. Again, for the convenience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true. So that's the biggest thing there is setting, knowing what you want. See, what we sum it up here is a bottom line is knowing what you want and what you will not tolerate and what is aligned with your personal happiness and what's in line with your self-care and your self-confidence. So if you know those things, you'll be able to set your limitations. You'd be able to say no. But if you don't have the confidence, get help. If you don't have the ability to shift your energy, find out how, right? There's coaches out there, there's therapists out there, there's people out there that can help you. You know, because a lot of times you turn to friends and friends have an opinion about something. Uh, but a coach, with a therapist, a psychologist, they have no opinion about something. It's take what it is in front of them, right, wrong, or indifferent, what is in front of them, and, and ask and the questions. That goes with some family members too. Yep. Not just friends, yeah. Family members too. Family members can see you every way but loose. Right. So again, guys, thank you for listening to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. I hope you learn how to set healthy boundaries. What are your emotional boundaries? So that way you have the energy for yourself always. Self-healing and self-care, it should be number one on your list. So again, this is Ron Johnson, your life coach, leadership coach, motivational speaker, and health coach. And, you know, um, make a commitment to put your own needs, feelings, and your goals first. Protect your time. Don't overcommit like a lot of us do and we forget. And then get some space. We all need space. We all need our own time. And honor what is important to you by putting yourself first. Care about yourself. And again, this is Gloria, your life coach. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Life's a Shuffle.